So welcome to another podcast from Odell Technology. Today, we're very fortunate enough to be talking to Dr. Attard, Dr. Dr. Dylan Attard, who has managed to create uh, a rather meaningful uh, conference in Malta every year, uh, MedTech, and has been able to marry venture capitalists, angel investors, together with people with brilliant ideas. Hello, Dr. Attard. Hi, Stephen. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, actually, and genuinely excited for to, to have a discussion together. It's nice to see you again, sir. So, um, if you don't mind, I'll call you Dylan during the call. Of course. Um, it's been thank a you while. Very much. These people refer to me as a doctor, given that I did make a, a career jump. So, I'm glad you have made a big career jump. And, and, that, and that's intriguing by itself. So, if you wouldn't mind telling me how your professional career started and how you ended up where you are today. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, I graduated as a doctor in 2017. Um, uh, I went through medical school in Malta. I've always loved um, uh, becoming a doctor. I mean, there's there's good satisfaction in helping patients, getting to know about how the how the human body works. Eventually, I made uh, my chose a surgical career specialty. It was full of adrenaline, full of chaos. And I used to work more than sixty to eighty hours, possibly at one week, doing night shifts, followed up by 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 days long days at work. But I always felt restricted working in a hospital, working in one ward, tending to one patient at a time. I've always loved entrepreneurship. In fact, um, right days after I graduated as a medical school, after I came back from my post-graduation trip, um, I remember looking at what other post-grad courses there there was being offered at the University of Malta, trying to kind of delve myself into entrepreneurship and business. And in fact, I had um, uh, successfully completed the master's in knowledge-based entrepreneurship, which was back then being taught by professors from the University of, of Oxford in liaison with the University of Malta. So that kind of gave me um, a bigger perspective of what's out there and even more importantly about how I could combine all my years of medical training, eventually working as a doctor, as a surgeon, to delve into the, the entrepreneurship field. Um, uh, and so, I mean, I worked, I achieved basic surgical training, and then I, I mean, I had to take a break because I was trying to do it part-time. I was trying to, like, delve into a lot of different side hustles part-time, but it was getting to me. Surgery would need to be full of focus, doing one thing at a time. Um, uh, and I took a break, and three years down the line, I can't say um, I, I'm regretting it. <laughs> So, so Dylan, where are you now? What are you doing now? And, and 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 I know it started a few years ago, but it's grown into a into something very significant in a very short time. Exactly. So I've always loved events. I've always loved entrepreneurship, startups, and investment. So it was very natural for me to try and do something which incorporates them all. Um, uh, I had approached. An inter a, local, a locally based international company. Um, it's called Sigma. They run events and conferences across different industries, um, gaming, air, and blockchain, nothing to do with healthcare. Anyways, I pitched them the idea of founding the MedTech World Summit, incorporating healthcare. So I'm, I'm, I was able to use the resources from conference production, marketing, logistics, um, to grow a conference base of my own. We should brand it as the MedTech World Summit. This was three years ago. Um, so eventually, as we continue to grow, we had to start growing our own team, and that's where we are now, and that's where that's what I'm currently going to be focusing in the next couple of weeks, especially after this year's edition, which just happened weeks ago. And uh, given its huge successes, we're ma we're bound to continue growing more. Um, so sorry? what happens at the conferences? I understand that seed investors, venture capitalists come along, new entrepreneurs. What actually happens at the conferences? So the main gist of the conference is trying to impair with maximizing Malta's very good location for a conference. I mean, everyone loves coming here. It's a beautiful island. Um, we've had people coming in from North America, from, from across the world. In parallel to all of this, we're trying to get as many startups to connect with investors from around the world. Um, so when it comes to our main Malta Summit, which is held over two days, multiple main stages running in parallel evening networking events, the whole gist is to try and get as many good caliber startups, so startups who genuinely are looking to create a difference within healthcare and improve healthcare to be connected with investors, be it if they're coming from a VC perspective, private equity, angel investors, and so on. And do you help them with their pitch deck? Do you actually have someone who can help them put together something sensible for investors? So something we're taking pride in ourselves at the moment is that we're when it comes to the people joining the conference, I mean, we're not looking to, to, to 
organize any massive trade shows, any massive exhibitions. So we're focusing on events on a smaller scale in which we'd be able to get to know anyone or rather everyone who's joining us on a one-to-one -one basis to then be able to help tailor, um, uh, to help them with, with whatever they need, be it if, they, if they're looking for a one-to-one -one curated connections with investors who, are, who we might know that might fit their, uh, it might, that particular startup might fit their investment thesis, or else be it helping them with their pitch deck, um, sometimes even possibly helping to loop them in with any hospitals to be able to carry out their um, uh, their, their clinical studies. I come across hundreds of companies pitching their, their services from, from law firms, legal firms, financial firms, marketing design companies, and they're all looking to eventually help startups. So it's very, I mean, it's rather easy for us to, to open up a couple of email threads and eventually um, let, that, let them take over. I see. Okay. And what inspired you? I know that you said you enjoyed doing events. But what you've actually created here is quite unique, I think, in Europe right now. I think there's a similar, it's not too dissimilar to what you're doing in the States, but I think that this is quite unique in Europe right now. What inspired you? Did you, have, did you, did you encounter a lot of startups along the way? I've, I mean, once I had re, um, read a quote in which it said that every startup deserves to be funded. Now, I'm not saying that every startup deserves to be eventually bought by a strategic partner or taken to IPO, but at least every entrepreneur who is, who is aspiring to, sell, to solve a particular problem and has a, a solution to a problem deserves um, all the backing he or she could get to eventually test out their theories. So essentially what we're trying to do is try and help every startup out there that, is, um, uh, that has an idea of how they can improve healthcare um, uh, to actually get them the funding needed, get them the connections needed, because sometimes it's not just about the funding, but rather the even possibly emotional support. I mean, connecting startups together. Um, three weeks ago, for our Morta conference, we ran a CEO-only forum in which we um, hosted 75 CEOs of medtech companies, and they were pure CEOs. I mean, we've, we've had to refuse actual people trying to pose as CEOs of medtech companies when, when they weren't. So we actually were quite strict. And they were there in one room together for a couple of hours in the afternoon on day zero of the conference discussing the problems that they were that they were facing. Um, okay. So it's not just about financial support, but rather them feeling particularly included and involved in an ecosystem revolving around medtech and medical devices. So Dylan, when is the next conference? All right, so when it comes to our main conference, it's always the Malta MedTech World Summit, which we usually organize towards the end of the year. This year, it was three weeks ago. Next year is going to be between the 6th to the 8th of November. But what we do in the meantime is um, we run a series of roadshow events, which is quite unique in terms of the um, similar conference brands, because we invest loads of our time and resources touring different cities. And we've done this multiple times in Dubai, Toronto, Belgrade, The Hague, London, Istanbul. So we've done quite a bit. And these usually are one day events on a smaller scale which we try to maximize in terms of use these opportunities to connect with different key thought leaders ceos startup founders investors across different cities and continents um, to eventually be able to promote the Malta Metric World Summit and invite them over to our main Malta conference. And our first one for next year is scheduled to, to be happening on the 26th of February um, in Dubai at the Intercontinental Festival City. We're looking to get as many startups be it to those who already came to our events based in Europe or or North America or wherever, to join us in, uh, in, in the Middle East and possibly pitch their businesses to VCs, to investors, family offices based around the area. I've been to the Middle East a number of times. I know how... And how exciting they are to work with um, Western companies, with companies based in Europe. Um, uh, they're very much looking forward to onboard any medical device or solution onto their hospital systems. There's usually, there's usually less red tape than possibly in Europe and North America, which is something good um, for startups who would want to, to achieve things fast. So we're looking quite forward to that. So how does the MedTech Summit align itself with the Maltese government currently? Sure. I mean, I, we were quite lucky in all fairness. I mean, when I when I first started this out three years ago, there was barely a medtech industry here. Eventually, as we continued growing, I got more traction and finally managed to align all the local key stakeholders, including government entities. So essentially, up until a few years ago, Malta was just a small island in the Mediterranean, relying on tourism for its economy to keep going. Then different governments tried to introduce different industries from gaming, plant medicine, AI, blockchain. And eventually now we're focusing on medtech. 
So the Maltese government, through its relative entities, be it the Malta Digital Innovation Authority, be it Malta Enterprise, which is the government's main direct arm to attract foreign direct investment, are literally laying down the red carpet for startups, for companies, for medium-sized to large companies to set up um, an office here, to set up a base here, to set up their R&D, oper- their R&D operations. And they distribute um, uh, hundreds of different types of grants, tax rebates. They help with office space. They literally make it as easy as possible for companies from, from elsewhere to settle in Malta. And it's not just about the numbers game. So we're not trying to pitch Malta as a potential revenue opportunity for them, because essentially everyone, everyone knows we're a small island. There's obviously very limited market opportunity here. But what Malta could be key for, these, especially these companies, meta companies in earlier stages, is to use Malta as a test base for their solutions for, med- for their medical devices. We only have one big major hospital, um, which caters for over 600,000 people who are based in Malta, so all their data centers are located, and it's very easy for, for such companies to establish communication with this hospital, get access to be it electronic health care records or whatever data they're looking for, carry out their clinical trials, get their devices approved by the European Union and its relative entities, and from here they, they could eventually take on bigger cities, bigger countries, and possibly North America and the rest of the world. It's very interesting. I, I think it's a fabulous place. The other thing that uh, people are aware of, that the, the, the university hospital have some very open minds and are able to help create real-world evidence in Malta. So I think that's another plus on the side of the Maltese government and the way things have been. And you've been instrumental in helping create this environment for, for Malta. So I think that that's a very commendable set of activities you've been undertaking. So is there anything else you would like to mention? Not particularly, no. I mean, going back to the conference this year, it was quite a, a relief and a sense of satisfaction that after three years of hard work in which I had to pursue and convince a local key stakeholders, even some of my consultants at the hospital who I used to work with, to come to the conference up until a few weeks ago, they were messaging me themselves and showing interest on their own behalf to attend the conference, which was quite good because if we were looking to 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 improve the local healthcare industry if we're looking to nurture a medtech industry the change needs to come from from the ground up so the healthcare practitioners themselves needs to demand more investments within the medtech and local digital health um, and healthcare industry um, uh, so i mean i'm quite excited for what the future holds obviously and hopefully there will be more people more healthcare practitioners like me who are who either opt to be entrepreneurial within their working environment or possibly take a break from their clinical training, from their clinical work and pursue other careers um, uh, within the within the healthcare industry. Dylan, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time today. Likewise. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Well,